as one lives in time and becomes more and more conscious of time, we tend more and more to pursue the future, as I said a little while ago. And as we pursue the future, present time becomes more and more unsatisfactory, and we feel that we have to chase our happiness at greater and greater speeds. I was talking the other day to a college president who said, you know, I'm so busy now that I'm going to have to get a helicopter. I said, whatever you do, don't do it, because if you get it, more will be expected of you. You'll be expected to go to more places faster. And you see, in this whole problem of speed, of getting advantages in life because we can move about rapidly, we forget that speed is only of real advantage to you if you're the only person who has it. Then you can get ahead of other people. But the minute everybody else catches up with you, you're all back where you were, only going much faster and much more nervously, going, as it were, faster and faster to less and less desirable objectives. We hurry everything we do. We make our products, our houses, our furniture, our clothes, so that they become obsolete quickly. We're in such a hurry to get everything done. We pay attention to the front rather than the back. Who, for example, in this day and age, has time to do anything like this? Here's a piece of Chinese embroidery. Those among you who've ever done any embroidery, some of the ladies, will no doubt recognize that this is a kind of stitch called needlepoint. It's done on a material made up of minute little squares of thread, like a grid or lattice of thread. And this work here is so minute that there are 1,024 stitches to the square inch. So well done, furthermore, that if you turn it over and look at the back, the back is almost as neat as the front. You know, ordinarily when you embroider, you take shortcuts around the back and take threads, uh, jumping spaces and tie knots and things of that kind. But here, no hurry. Or take such an ordinary object as a lady's pocketbook. This again is Chinese embroidery work in shaded silk. Very patiently done over a padded base underneath so that the figures stand out. And inside it, a little sewing case, which opens up, showing concealed within the place for the scissors, but the most delicate work. But in this day and age, we don't have time for it, because we are always in a hurry to get things finished. And so the things that we finish weren't worth finishing because they were done so fast. After all, the enjoyment of our world is not really unlike listening to music. We don't play music in order to get somewhere. I mean, if the objective of music were to arrive at a point, say the last bar, the final great crashing chords of the symphony, well then all we'd do, we'd be just hurry up its playing, play it as fast as possible so as to get to the culmination, the end, as soon as possible. Or just cut out the whole symphony and play only the last bars. To be able to enjoy it, we have got to live each moment of the playing and listen to it as if it were the only thing important to listen to. And then if we do that, our time has an entirely different quality. It's represented in a Buddhist saying that spring does not become the summer. There is spring and then there is summer. Firewood does not turn into ashes. There is first firewood, and then there are ashes. The two stages being, as it were, sufficient by themselves. And this is intended to give the idea of living in a fully concrete present into which you settle in. I mean, the present for most of us is, isn't it, just a hairline on a dial. 
And the hand goes by it flash, and there's nothing in it, one after another. But here there is an entirely different sense of the present, as something you can settle into. There's a line behind me from a Chinese poem, and it says, literally, day, ditto, in other words, day, day, that is good day. Every day is a good day. <laughs>